So in this video, we're going to look at a linear system described by a differential equation, and we are going to figure out the impulse response of the system. So here is the system. It's a differential equation relating the output of the system y of t to the input of the system f of t. And what we would like to do is find h of t, the impulse response of the system. So to do that, we need to pick off some important quantities. One is the polynomial q of d. So this is the polynomial on the left that multiplies y. Looking at this, we can tell that it is a first order polynomial. So n is equal to one in this example. The other quantity that we'll need is the polynomial p of d. That is the polynomial in d that is multiplying f of t. And we need that because we need to be able to figure out what bn is. So remember the b's, b0, b1, b2, b3, up to bn, are the coefficients in the polynomial p of d. Since n is equal to 1, what we're looking for here is b sub 1, the, polyn the um, number that is multiplying the first differential. So this is d to the 1, so we can tell that bn is equal to 3, so we can pick that off. This is the equation that we'll be evaluating for the impulse response, and we've already gotten part of it done. We've already figured out that this is indeed equal to 3. What we need to do is go ahead and compute the rest of this. So if you recall, yn of t is a linear combination of the characteristic modes of the system, so we need to figure out what yn of t is. Looking at our characteristic equation, which comes from q here, we replace all the d's with lambdas, so the characteristic equation of this system is lambda plus 2. So this is a pretty simple one to solve for the roots. If we rearrange, we get that the eigenvalue, and there's only one of them because it's first order, lambda 1 is equal to a negative 2. So that means our characteristic mode, there's only one of them, because there's only one root, is equal to e to the negative 2t. So that's the characteristic mode, there's only one of them. yn of t is a linear combination of the characteristic modes, so we can form yn of t by taking a linear combination of the one thing there, so we put the arbitrary constant k1 out front. So now what we need to do, now that we know the form of y n of t, we need to actually use our initial conditions to figure out what this unknown constant k1 is. So the way I like to remember the conditions on y n of t is that at time 0, all the initial conditions are equal to 0, except for the n minus 1 derivative at 0 is equal to 1. So this is the only quantity that's non-zero. y n of t, the derivative n minus 1, is equal to 1. So in this case, what is n minus 1? It, n minus 1, since n is 1, is 0. So this is the 0th derivative at time 0 is equal to 1, but the 0th derivative is just nothing. It's just yn, right? So what we know is that yn at time 0 is equal to 1. So I can use that right here. Let's evaluate this signal at time 0. I replace all the t's with 0, so that's a 0 there. This raised to the 0 becomes a 1, so I just end up with k1. By definition, it has to equal 1, so we were able to solve for k1 is equal to 1. So now we know exactly what y n of t is equal to. It's just equal to e to the minus 2t. So now we can go ahead and use y n of t in this equation right there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's compute p of d, that polynomial, times y n of t. Well, p of d in this example is 3d plus 5, so I need to compute 3d plus 5 times e to the negative 2t. If I multiply this out, that's really 3 times the derivative of e to the negative 2t plus 5 times e to the negative 2t. And this is a very easy derivative to do. The derivative of e to the minus 2t is minus 2e to the negative 2t, so that turns into a negative 6. And then look at this. These are similar terms, so I can combine like terms, and I get minus e to the negative 2t, because minus 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. So I have gotten all the pieces computed. I know that bn is 3, so I'm going to have a 3 delta t. I just computed what this is. It is equal to a negative 2t, and then I need to tack on the u of t. So I have plugged back into this equation. So this is the impulse response of this system. And we were able to derive that impulse response by examining the differential equation and using our equation for h of t that we use for problems like this.